appreciate uh, Fausto uh, for the introduction and uh, being a part of the 2013 Cyber Expo. Uh, appreciate everybody here sharing part of their day with me. My name is Dwayne Gott. I am one of the senior trading instructors with eSignal and eSignal Learning. I am tied specifically to the advanced GET iteration of the eSignal platform. And today we're going to be going through a rules-based approach to trading with Elliott Waves. Um, now we've got a lot of material to get through, so I'm not going to waste any time. Advanced GET is a multidisciplined platform. And what we're going to be doing here today is talking about a very particular aspect of Advanced GET. Now the GET of Advanced GET is not random. It stands for GAN Elliott Trader. And today we're going to be focusing on the middle portion of this, the Elliott Wave part. Now, Elliott Wave Theory was developed back in the late 30s, early 40s. It is a labeling system for the market. Don't let anybody tell you different. It is a way to identify where you live within the context of a chart. And what we've done with Advanced Get is taken this Elliott Wave Theory and we've built trading strategies around very particular aspects of it to give you that mechanical edge, that very premeditated type of trade that is really going to take a lot of the uncertainty out of the markets. Now, with that said, before we get into the nuts and bolts of the two Elliott Wave based strategies of advanced debt, it's important to have some understanding about what an Elliott Wave pattern is all about. And the easiest way I have found to explain it is to think about it in terms of psychology. As people, as traders, we are creatures of habit. We do the same things again and again. You know, as we make our trades, as we, you know, execute our trades with the market, you know, those trades become assimilated and it's really a charting of mass psychology. And we're going to use that prior behavior, those prior tendencies to really identify when the market is giving us an opportunity. Now, what you can see here, this is the Elliott five wave pattern. And every swing in terms of this pattern in Elliott wave theory is called a wave. So when I say Elliott wave, what I'm really referring to is Elliott swing. We're looking at different swings in the market and seeing how those waves come together with some Elliott with, with some Fibonacci ratios. Now it all begins here with a wave one, that initial move, that initial swing to the upside. Now as that swing takes place, you know, as people we begin to want to take some profit, we want to take some money off the table and we see wave two. Wave two is a selling wave. It is really the first correction within this pattern. The next piece that comes in is the wave three. Wave three is typically a very strong dynamic momentum driven move of this pattern. And it's really comprised of two groups of traders. The first one is we've got people who are looking to sell wave one. If you were to imagine a big long downtrend leading into this wave one, we've got our initial bounce. The short sellers are going to come in and say, hey, this is a point at which I can short the market. I can you know, get some downside here. And to a certain extent, they get some satisfaction out of that trade. They get some profit. However, you'll notice that the wave two doesn't take out the low of wave one. That being said, those short sellers become a little concerned about their short position and they realize that the market is not making new lows and therefore they start to need to cover. Well, about that point when we take out the high of wave one, that really is where the short squeeze kicks in. Anybody who's been short from this wave two is now realizing, hey, we're not breaking down, we're breaking up, I need to cover. So you get the short sellers covering the position and you get the momentum traders jumping on the bandwagon, realizing that the short sellers are wrong. That's what makes this wave three so strong, is comprised of two groups of people, okay? Now, from this wave three, very strong, very dynamic, and again, profits were made here, but again, we see some profit taking and that comes into wave four the secondary correction of this pattern. And this is a profit-taking wave. You know, wave two is a correction, wave four is a correction. Wave two was selling, however, wave four is profit-taking. And what we're trying to do is we are trying to capture the last and final move of wave five. Now, I talk about all of this so you can, again, understand the psychology of what drives an Elliott wave 
pattern. And it, at the end of the day, it's just that. It's a chart pattern. Just like the head and shoulders patterns, the flag patterns, the diamond patterns, those very traditional uh, chart patterns I'm sure many of us are familiar with. This is a chart pattern nonetheless. It looks very different than the others, but it's a chart pattern at the end of the day. Now, what we're trying to do here using Advanced Get is we are going to be focusing on the areas in blue. We are going to be looking uh, for the beginning of wave three, and we're also going to be looking primarily in terms of Elliott Wave for the end of wave four so we can capture this last and final move. We're trying to capture the end of wave four and pick up this final swing before we get a major change in trend. And to do that, we're going to be using some pieces of advanced get to make this very, very mechanical. Now, with that in mind, there are a variety of trades with advanced get that occur within this five-wave pattern. We Obviously, we've got our breakout model, our momentum trade, which is designed to pick up our wave three to get in front of that wave three at the earliest possible point. We've got the end of wave four, our trend continuation model, you know, looking for that pullback, that retracement that we need in, in against that wave three. And finally, the counter trend model, looking for that, that real clear uh, major change in trend that we want to take advantage of. Now, whatever we can do in an uptrend, we can do with a downtrend as well. Direction is irrespective. So those same models that we're talking about here can be applied in the opposite direction. Now, there's a lot to Elliott Wave Theory. It can be made very, very complex. Elliott Wave Theory is really a nomenclature, and it's comprised of about nine different levels, all the way from the grand super cycle, all the way down to the sub minutia level. If you are trading Elliott Waves from a grand super cycle type of mentality, you're trading once every 30 years. If you're trading something like the sub minutia level, you're going to be trading pretty much every minute. What we're doing with advanced get is we're focusing on the three degrees in the middle. We are focusing on primary, intermediate, and minor because they are the most practical. Now, in terms of the different pieces of Elliott Wave Theory, this is by no means a complete list of all the rules that go into this, but some of the basics. Wave three is never the shortest. It's not always the longest, but wave three is never the shortest wave. And then we have some uh, ideas or theories that go into the types of corrections that we can see. When we're focusing on wave two and wave four, those corrective waves, we have a variety of ways to identify whether we're dealing with a simple correction or a complex correction. Now, all of this is being glued together with Fibonacci ratios, and this is just some of the basics. When we're talking about wave two, that initial correction, all right, uh, what we want to do here is we're going to be using Fibonacci to identify, you know, basically where wave two could come in by analyzing wave one. Now, wave three is our first real impulse swing, that big powerful move, and it's really a product of wave one and two. If you think of waves one and two as the parents, wave three is really the child and it is typically 1.6 times the length of wave one, 2.6 times the length of wave one, and it can be even 4.25 the length of wave one. I talk about this again to help you give uh, some real clarity as to how these waves are related. Wave four, our second correction, can come in in a variety of places, typically 24, 38.2, and 50% of wave three. In fact, 60% of all wave fours come in between 38.2 and the 50% retracement level. And finally, the wave five is all again related to that wave one, two, and three relationship. But let's put it in practical terms. This right here is a 60 minute chart of Stryker. This is SYK 60 minute time frame. There is that same five wave pattern all over again. We've got the wave one down, wave two, selling wave, all right, or a buying wave. They're looking for that move up. We've got that very strong, powerful wave three, wave four, our secondary correction, and five, the final move of the sequence. But again, it's all being put together with fib ratios. So let's start from the left. We'll work our way to the right and begin to take a look at how these waves are put together from here. Now, Let's take that wave one, that initial swing down. We've got that initial swing 
take a look at where wave two came in to place, right into 61.8%. We found that level of resistance. We found that area, that sticking point where, you know, wave two is now having a problem, all right? Anybody who was looking uh, to buy the bottom of wave one, they've gotten some movement upward and they're saying, okay, I'm slightly profitable, but we're not moving any further beyond 61.8%. Now, what we're going to do here, knowing that we are uh, dealing with a wave one and two, and wave one and two is very speculative. It's a very, very uh, sort of uh, uncertain piece of the market. So we're not going to actively trade these using the Elliott models, but we do need to have an understanding of them. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to use some other tools, some Fibonacci tools, the Fibonacci extension to help figure out where wave three is going to land. And remember, we need to understand that wave one and two is the driving force here. So what we're going to do is use the Fibonacci extension tool. It's a variant of the retracement. We're going to take the Fibonacci extension tool. We're going to make our first click at the high of wave one, come down to the low of wave one, and then we shift that up to the high of wave two. And in doing so, you can see here, we've got 1.618 and 2.618. And these are areas where wave three typically likes to find that support. It's where wave three typically extends to Fibonacci extension, okay? So we've measured wave one and then we've shifted it to the high of wave two and then looked at the 1.618 and 2.618 ratios to figure out where wave three is going to land, all right? So now you can see here that wave three has come in beyond 1.618, all right? So this is a very common area for wave threes to extend to. Now, now that we've got the three, we're now gonna come in and we're gonna start looking for the wave four, that secondary correction, that profit taking correction that's gonna set us up for a type one trading model. And I'll talk about the type one trade. As I said, approximately 60% of the time, wave fours come in between 38.2 and 50%. This is really where a majority of the wave fours are going to happen. So go into your charts, draw a retracement on those big strong trends, and look at where the corrections are coming in. In this case, 38 to 50%. Now there's a certain amount of them that are not going to make it to that level. There's going to be about 15% that only go to a 25% retracement. All right. And there's going to be another 15% that come all the way up here to 61.8. All right, so those of you who are doing the math, you're saying, well, 60% of the time between 38 and 50, all right, 15% of the time to 25, and another 15 to 618, that's only 90%. That means the remaining 10% of all wave fours are going to go past 61.8. And from here, what we're trying to capture is we're trying to capture that last and final move, the wave five. Why are we only trying to capture this final move? Well, it's the easiest one to see coming. It's the easiest one to anticipate because the rationale is if wave one looks good and two and three are behaving right, four is doing what we expect. We have no other option but to assume that wave five is going to complete the pattern. Okay, so I go through this whole primer to help people understand this pattern. It's highly repeatable, but you need to understand what's going on because we're going to take this, apply some of the specific pieces of advance get to it, to really help us identify a good trading setup using the type one and type two. Now, whatever can be done in price can also be done in time. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use another Fibonacci tool to help identify when wave four, not where wave four, but when wave four is likely to be completed. And we're gonna use the Fibonacci time tool to do that. What we're going to do with the Fibonacci time tool is we're going to go back to these waves. We're going to go back to the bottom of our wave one, and we draw all the way down to the bottom of our wave three. And what we're looking for here is for wave four to come in between 1.382 and 1.618 of that measured amount of time. So we've got the area in terms of price. Now we have it in terms of time, and this is where those disjointed inflection points that we're looking to take advantage of come together. Now, from here, 
right into 38.2%. Uh, We've now got the timing marks coming together. This is the point at which we are going to be looking to take a trade. Now, all of this, all right, up until this point, um, you know, has been a manual process. But it's also not uh, an, an isolated incident. This is the S&P 500 during the 2008-2009 uh, market meltdown. You can see we've got the wave one down, wave two up, strong wave three down, profit taking of wave four, and wave five. And where did wave five come in? Right around March 2009, where we had a major, major change in trend. Okay? So this right here, I mean, this is about as big as you can go. We're looking at the S&P 500. This isn't an individual stock. It happens with individual stocks, but it happens across the board. So whether you're doing currencies, futures, whatever the case may be, this pattern is there. You have to be able to train yourself and use some of the pieces of advanced get that we use to help identify it. Now, again, um, our Elliott strategies are looking for the beginning of wave five and the end of wave five because the real takeaway here is that 68 to 74 percent of the time, markets terminate on a second attempt. Second attempt at a new high second attempt at a new low, all right? That's where the major, major changes in trend are going to come in to the equation, all right? Now, from here, as we keep going through this, that first attempt, wave three, is very strong. We end up with that profit-taking phase of wave four, and then we make that secondary attempt, the wave five. But the wave five, even though it's making a new high, it's happening on far less energy. There's far less momentum and enthusiasm behind that secondary top or secondary bottom, and that's why we get that major change in trend. Everybody was euphoric during wave three, all right? Wave five, it's making new highs, but the enthusiasm level has gone way, way down, all right? Now, this is an example here. You can see there's a lot of variations to this, and it's important to understand those variations. This is a daily chart of Starbucks. Notice here we made that, that high point, but we never made a secondary attempt. From here, we've got what's called in Elliott Wave Circles the truncated fifth wave. That's a fancy way of saying a double top. You can see we've got the three. We've got our wave four correction. Wave five came up, re-challenged wave three, but did not technically make a new high. So it's that kind of thing to really understand uh, what can happen and some of the things that we use to avoid situations like this, all right? Now, as I was saying, can you do this manually? Yes, you can. Does it take a lot of time and work? Yes, it does. Uh, a lot of people who've done this by hand understand the amount of time that's involved in going through and doing your own Elliott Wave counts. What we've done is with Advanced Get is we have built some tools to do the heavy lifting for you. And with that, we are now going to introduce you to the Advanced Get Type 1 trade. This trade's sole purpose is to identify the beginning of Wave 5, that last and final move of the overall pattern. So think of this strategy as Elliott Wave Plus. We're using Elliott Waves plus some proprietary indicators to give us a really clear mechanical premeditated sense of when there is a trade and when we need to get involved. Now, the first thing that we're going to be using here is called the Advanced Get Oscillator. It is a close second cousin to the MACD. It does some other things differently than the MACD, but it is there to measure momentum. During that wave three, the, our oscillator is going to be really, really big, very, very significant because the momentum is very strong during that wave three. From here, during wave five, however, that oscillator should have a significant drop down in terms of how big it is. If we were to compare the wave five oscillator to the wave three oscillator, wave three should be substantially bigger than what we're seeing in five. Now, this is what it looks like. You can see here, we've got that wave three, that strong, enthusiastic piece of the market, that real strong impulse move, oscillator is very big. Here we are making that secondary attempt in wave five, and notice the oscillator still gave us a fairly decent readable uh, uh, peak to work off of, but that peak is a lot lower than what's happening over here, and that's an indication that we are looking for a change in trend, a major change in trend. 
Now, from here, let's take a look. This is MetLife. This is a daily chart. And what we're going to do with the advanced get oscillator is we are going to be looking for wave three to be completed. We're not taking advantage of wave three with this particular model. We've got a different trading strategy for that. Uh, that's a, a, our momentum trade. This one, we're looking for the end of wave four so we can jump on that last and final move. Now, the, bill, the real trick here is looking for the end of wave four, looking for that profit taking decline to be over. How do we do that? Well, the advanced get oscillator gives us a pretty good idea because 94% of the time during a good wave four, the oscillator comes back to zero. It can go a little bit below zero. That we don't mind. But it's the coming back to zero part that's so important because you show me out of 100 observations, 94% uh, of the time it's true. That's a very, very important thing to know and understand. All right, so 94% of the time during a good wave four, that oscillator pulls back to zero, all right? Now, from here, take a look. This is Microsoft weekly chart, and I'm using an older screenshot to illustrate that this is not a new occurrence. This has happened over a significant period of time. I'm going all the way back to 98 to illustrate that this pattern holds up over a long periods of time whether it's today's trader, you're going back and trying to really validate this pattern, you can see here what happened during our wave four. Well, the oscillator pulled back to zero, all right? Here we are looking at the June uh, 1998 S&P futures. Here's our wave four. What happened with the oscillator? The oscillator pulled back to zero. So we're getting that oscillator confirmation really to validate the overall wave count, all right? Now, this right here, NZT, what did we get? During wave four, we pulled back to zero, and we give it a range. We give it a very uh, clear area of a minimum pullback and a maximum pullback. There is a zone in here where the oscillator must pull back to a minimum but not exceed a maximum. Anything beyond the maximum is going to break one of the key rules for the type one trade, and we're gonna have to let it go. We're going to have to be willing to walk away from this because a key rule has been broken, all right? Now, from here, like I said, whatever we can do in an uptrend, we can do in a downtrend. And as you can see here, what happened during our wave four? The oscillator came back to zero, staying right within that zone uh, of acceptable pullback, as we call it, telling us that the wave four is likely in place. So we can start putting some things together to take advantage of that last and final move. Now, from here, we're gonna incorporate another piece. This is what we call the PTI. It stands for Profit Taking Index. And the sole purpose of this particular indicator is to measure the profit taking that is occurring during wave four. We know wave four is a profit taking role. You know, wave three being as big and strong as it was, it's the right thing to do. So as profit taking comes out, we want to make sure that the profit taking is happening in a very orderly way. There is a fine line between very logical profit taking and a complete capitulation. So we measure that. We look at that specifically to make sure that whatever profits are coming out of the market, it's happening in a very, very orderly type of way. All right. And the PTI, we have some measurements for it. All right. We're going to be looking uh, specifically for a PTI value, and it charts it right there on the screen. Um, you know, it has to be above 35. In this case, you can see we've got uh, just sort of a, a general example in terms of this 57. We want to see a PTI value that is above 35, and it, again, puts it right on the screen automatically. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is apply the Elliott Waves to your chart, and it's going to handle all of these pieces for you. But anything less than 35, that's a problem, all right? So here we are, all right? Back to that chart of MetLife. Notice here, um, the upper part, upper right-hand corner of my part, we've got a PTI of 84, all right? That is well above that 35 threshold that we're looking for. So in this case, we can say that we have a good PTI. The profits during four are happening in a very orderly way. We've got the wave four, oscillators pulled back to zero. We're starting to look pretty good here. This is the kind of thing that we're thinking about in terms of the type one trade. 
Now, in here, take a look. We've got Boise Cascade, and this is a, a PTI that had a, uh, gave us an indication that uh, the profits were coming out in an orderly way. We had a PTI of 64. More importantly, it's above 35. That's what we want to see. And what did we get? We got a new high. That wave five exceeded the high of wave three, and that's what this is all about. So these pieces are now coming together to build that complete picture. Now, again, there's some variations of this. Take a look here. In this case, we've got a PTI of 17. Is that good enough for us to take this type one trade? All right, we've got the wave four coming together. Uh, the oscillator is, is going to be okay in this. But more importantly, this is the takeaway. Look at our PTI. Our PTI is less than 35. So do we expect new highs? Do we expect to see a, a, a move beyond the wave, uh, the high of wave three? In this case, no. That PTI gave us an indication that profits were coming out far too fast for us to be interested in buying this pullback. And as you can see here, aren't you sort of glad that you didn't? That PTI was a clue. That PTI was indicating, hey, the money's coming out too fast. We need to be uh, very wary of this and maybe come at it a different way, wait for a different setup, what have you. But if that PTI is too low, we're not interested. Now, from here, you can see another, some more examples. Here we have a PTI of 13. Did we get a new high? Did we get a second attempt? No, didn't happen, all right? From here, we got a PTI of 28, less than 35. What did we get? We got a double top, all right? That truncated fifth wave. That PTI is giving you that clue. It's letting you know that something is amiss. Now, in this case, here we are looking at Dell. This is a uh, daily chart. Notice here we've got that PTI at 73, all right? That PTI reading is really uh, giving us some Im good information about how this wave four is being put together. We're above 35. Do we expect a new low? We've got that big wave three down. The wave four has moved up. PTI is above 30. We expect a new low. Did we get it? We, in fact, did. We've got that wave five continuation, that final move of the sequence. Now, this is not the only thing that we're going to be looking for. So far, we've got the waves. We have the oscillator helping us identify the end of wave four. We've got the PTI handling the piece of making sure that the profit taking is happening in a very premeditated way. But finally, we also have what are called the wave four channels. All right. You'll see here we have. Uh, they look like uh, they resemble railroad tracks if you were to be looking at a map. You know, this is how railroads get uh, displayed on a map. These are here as lines of probability. These are here to tell you the likelihood of a higher or lower wave five, okay? Whenever the price action stays above the blue wave four channel, we have an 80% chance of making a higher wave five. If we stay above the blue, we have an 80% chance of a higher wave fall. If we break below the blue, it's not the end of the story. We're still okay here. If we stay above the green wave four channel, we have a 60% chance at a higher wave five. If on the other hand, we have broken the red wave four channel, we have less than a 50-50 chance of making a higher wave five. That means you're gonna get better data better odds by flipping a quarter over and over and over again than you will by taking a trade that has gone below the red wave four channel. So as soon as we get below that red wave four channel, the type one model is broken. That means we cannot take this in good conscience as a type one setup. So all four pieces of the type one trade have to be in place. Think of it like a four engined airplane. You know, if any one of those four engines on that airplane um, you know, breaks down, you know, technically you can still fly on three engines. You may even still be able to fly on two engines. But where is your confidence level going to be if two of the four engines are broken? So to take this trade with full confidence, everything has to be there. The wave four, the oscillators pulled back to zero, the PTI is above 35, and the wave four channels are holding. That right there indicates all four engines are operating at full potential. 
And that's what this is about, being able to take some trade uh, with confidence, to have a real sense of what it is that you're trying to accomplish and know that you're following a mechanical approach to doing that. All right? So, again, MetLife, wave four, channels are good, PTI, oscillators pull back. We have a type one trade. And, again, that same five-wave pattern, there it is, wave one, deep retracement of wave two, very strong, powerful wave three, wave four profit-taking phase. And from here, you know, what did we get? We got a higher wave five. We got that secondary attempt at the new high. And this is what that type one trait is designed to do. Now, another example, this one in a downtrend. This is Dell on that daily chart. We've got the wave four moving up. The oscillator is pulled back to zero. The PTI looks good. The channels are okay. And I do see some, some questions uh, coming through here. Does it work for Forex? Absolutely. Uh, can you show us some intraday uh, models here on the S&P futures? Absolutely. I will show you my trade from uh, one of my trades from this week using uh, this particular model. And uh, towards the zigzags, we have some things to help you anticipate and deal with the zigzags. Zigzags is a, uh, another part of the Elliott Wave um, model, and uh, they can be very, very frustrating if you don't know how to anticipate them, but we do have uh, some ways to help deal with that so that you know what's normal for a market versus what's abnormal for a market. So, all right, and uh, somebody asked here, how do you know which time frame higher may be in a different way? That gets into what I like to call a beer conversation, Charles, uh, <laughs> getting into, uh, you know, understanding what is the time dominant cycle. Uh, we can go to higher time frames to help identify those wave counts so we know uh, on the lower time frames how to anticipate uh, moves that give us that kind of continuation, but there are ways to do it. And we also have other trading models available using Elliott Waves that actually dovetail very well into this type of pattern. All right. Now, again, FDC, just some more examples of it. Wave four, the oscillators pulled back, the PTI is above 35, the channels are okay. From here, this is the S&P on a three-minute chart. This is from this week, all right? This is on Wednesday. Now, Wednesday, what did we have? We had sort of an important thing coming up, right? We had what? The Fed. So we were expecting, and normally I don't day trade on a, on a Fed day, but uh, as I was going through and uh, doing some coaching, doing some teaching, I saw a beautiful little type one trade come together, and I said, okay, we've got a Fed announcement coming up, but uh, there's a setup here. If we want to take advantage of it, we can and what do we have? This is um, from Wednesday. We've got our wave one down. Happened overnight, wave two up. We sold off for a good portion of the morning. First three hours of the day, we sold off pretty aggressively. The wave four came in, and take a look. As advanced get labeled that wave four, I, all I'm doing is going through and looking at the rules of the strategy to make sure that everything is holding up. The wave four is in place. The oscillator has pulled back to zero. The PTI is at 55, well above the 35 minimum. And the wave four channels are holding. And more importantly, this right here, we're staying below the blue wave four channel. So that tells me that we have an 80% chance of making a new low. And what did we get? Well, in this case, we got the lower move. And from here, picked up about three or four points. You know, not a home run, but for a day trade, most day traders are going to be quite content with picking up three or four points. It's sort of akin to walking down the street, finding a $5 bill on the ground. You bend over, you pick it up, you put it in your pocket, and you go on about your day. And from here, we were getting real, real close to that Fed announcement, so I decided to hit the eject button, got out of the trade, and um, from there, you, that Fed volatility came in, but I had already made my money and was sitting back as basically a popcorn trade watching uh, watching all the, uh, the market action after that announcement came through, all right? So this right here is just an intraday example because the question always comes up, does this stuff work intraday? Absolutely. Here's a three-minute chart to prove it from this week. So that right there is is another piece of this. Um, and uh, Don had mentioned there uh, seems to be like there's some waves within this wave three, within these, this big, larger move down, you're absolutely 
Correct. Remember that there's different levels of Elliott wave theory. Right now, I am focusing on the major waves. Within those major waves, there's a smaller account, smaller count occurring. I'm not trading those. I am trading the majors. And from there, that's what we want to see. All right. And remember, we give it a zone. Remember, we're gonna we want to see that pull back to zero. That's the most important piece. But also knowing that this oscillator doesn't exceed that absolute threshold tells us that the type one trade is still intact. And again, we got that lower move. We got that that secondary attempt at the new low. 68 to 74% of the time, this is where the markets are gonna turn, where we get we see that major change in trend. Now, how do you find these patterns? Well, it wouldn't be much good if advanced get didn't have a way to help identify this. Well, right now I've highlighted three of them. We've got AEE, we've got HOGS, and we've got MTES, all right? And these are all being done on the daily time frame. We can scan all the way down to the 15 minute time frame. And we have some other tools that allow you to find time frames even lower than that. But our scanner understands the pattern. It understands the rules of Elliott and what the type one trade is all about. So first one here, AEE. Take a look at what the scanner drummed up for us. We've got the four oscillators pulled back. PTI is good. Channels are okay. First one there looks pretty good. HOGS, wave four, channels, PTI, oscillators pulled back. Scanner's doing a good job of helping us find that. And finally, NTES, same thing. Wave four, channels are holding. We broke the blue, but again, not a deal breaker. We're staying above the green, so we have a 60% chance of a higher wave five. And this is where money management, having a clear entry process, all comes into the equation. That still has to be a part of what you're doing, all right? Now, from here, we're now going to introduce you to the second Elliott Wave strategy uh, for today. Now, the first one, the type one trade, is all about identifying the end of wave four so we can capture that wave five, okay? We're looking to, to capture that last and final move of the pattern. The type two trade is our counter trend model. For people who like to pick tops and pick bottoms, this is what we use to do that. This is how we identify that major change in trend. And we're using a lot of the same tools, but in a very different way to, to do that. So what we're looking at here in terms of the type two trade is we are letting the wave five become completed. We are letting that wave five make that new high surpass the high of wave three, that is where that wave five is going to come into play. And somebody had asked the question, you know, how do you anticipate the end of wave five? We've got a tool inside of advanced debt that does a really, really good job of that. So they see this right here, the one that I'm currently mousing over, this right here, this multicolored purple and blue uh, bar, this is what we call the MOB. It stands for make or break. And what we do is we make a click right off the high of wave three and it issues a projection about where wave five is likely to run into a problem. We know that well in advance. Before we ever take that type one trade, we know where wave five is gonna run into resistance. So as a type one trader, somebody who's capturing the end of wave four, as you're trading up, you know where the resistance level is coming in. You know where that area, uh, uh, that sticking point is going to uh, come into the equation. And what happens here? We ran into that resistance. We made the new high. We got the wave five, but more importantly, we got the divergence. Now, the divergence is an indication that wave five, even though it's making a new high, again, it's happening on a loss a lot less momentum. We're seeing a lot less enthusiasm behind that secondary push to the new high. And you can see here, wave three oscillator, very, very strong, all right? Very, very distended. This is what we want to see out of wave three. Wave five, not so much. In comparison, you can see that that wave five oscillator is a lot lower than the wave three, even though the wave five made the new high. That is a warning sign from the market. And when you are able to identify this, it is a game changer. 
it will help you identify, hey, we should be looking for a major inflection point here. And if you're along the market, you start to really start making that consider, hey, I need to get out of this. I need to take some profits off the table and move on to the next idea because we're running into resistance. The divergence is telling me that the market could be uh, potentially ready to turn. You got to be prepared for that. So learning to spot divergence is one of the absolute skills I always try to help our students develop. If you can learn to do that and to do that well, you can really avoid a lot of the traps that are out there in the market. Um, somebody asked here, why are we trying to capture wave three? If wave three is the biggest, strongest move of this pattern, why aren't we trying to capture that? I get worried when I don't see that question. So I'm very happy to uh, have you ask that. We have a way to capture wave three. It's again done with a different model sort of outside the scope of this presentation, but we have a momentum trade inside of advanced get called the XTL breakout. Uh, this, uh, this strategy is designed to put you in front of wave three, but at the earliest possible point. Problem with momentum trading is, you know, when do you get in? You know, if you find you, it's real easy to find yourself chasing trades or missing trades if you're trading momentum. The XTL breakout trade is designed to put you in front of wave three, but we've got some very strict ways in which we say it's time to get in and where our protective stop needs to be located. Now, here we are from another example. This is um, another one here. You can see our wave pattern. We've got the wave three, wave four up. Our wave five, we've made a new low. We have surpassed that low right there. And we've got that mob. Remember, we take that mob right off the lowest point, make a single click, and we find the support level about where wave five is able to, to come in and settle down. But more importantly, look at the divergence. Look at the divergence. Do you guys see here? Wave three had that really big, strong oscillator. But if we compare that to what's happening in five, look at that. You see that divergence. Again, that's the warning sign. And that right there uh, is going to, to really come into to the equation. So when I'm looking to take a counter trend trade, and Keep in mind, again, these are very addicting uh, types of trades because we all have that human need, that human nature to say, hey, I picked the top or I picked the bottom. Everybody likes to beat on their chest. I'm no exception to that. Uh, everybody, there's a certain amount of satisfaction that comes with that. But also understand that this trade typically has a higher failure rate because of what it is that we're doing. We are going against the trend. We are fighting the market. We are looking for a major, major shift in the price action. So if uh, you know, you're know you gonna take these trades, you're gonna be wrong about two out of three times. But with good money management, it can uh, you can be wrong twice, be right once, and still be very, very profitable. And that right there is is a real game changer for a lot of people. I don't have to be right, I just have to be profitable. And money management makes up a major part of what we're doing once we have identified this type of pattern, all right? Um, Charles, uh, do volume cycles uh, give any indication um, add to uh, momentum? Yeah, we have uh, some of our traders who use market profile. They will look for the point of control. They will look for, you know, sort of key areas within a market profile and say, well, I only want to take type one trades around this area, which is fine. Absolutely, I am a big proponent of use what works and discard what doesn't. If they want to use, um, you know, volume delta or market profile to help add some additional evidence to not only the type one or the type two trades, by all means use it. There's so many different ways to make money in this business, but make sure that you're doing it with some rules. Make sure that you're doing it with uh, a very, very mechanical uh, type of approach. Nothing here should happen by chance. If you want to go roll the dice, get on a plane and go to Vegas. They've got a great industry for that. This is a business decision. Every trade that I take is built around, is this a good decision for my business? And if it's not, then no thank you. That may be somebody else's trade, but that's not my trade. Um, 
Paul, do I use harmonics with Elliott Wave? Yes, I use a fair amount of GAN and uh, some other things to uh, help me in terms of my decision making. That's what uh, advanced GAN is all about. So far today, we've really uh, limited the conversation to the third part of GET, uh, but understand that GAN um, also plays into the equation here. And to the person who asked me about the uh, the mob, uh, it's a horizontal line. Um, it is using some Fibonacci work, but it is also using a fair amount of GAN. And GAN is a bigger, deeper conversation, sort of, again, beyond the scope of this presentation. Um, but uh, when you combine these two things, when you combine Elliott waves plus some other things, it can also uh, uh, give you some, some insight into what to expect from the markets. So how do you scan for these type of tricks? Well, you know, we, we set it up for the type one trade. We can do the same thing for the type two trade. Notice here, I've pulled out three examples from our scanner. We've got EGO, we've got UPS, and we've got CCK. These are the ones I've highlighted here. Let's take a look and see how they match up for the type one, or excuse me, the type two trading model. First one, EGO, daily chart. Notice here, we got our wave five, we're running into the mob, we're running into that level of resistance around $20, but notice this. Did we see the divergence? Warning sign. Market is telling you that something's changing. Be ready for a major change in trend. Next one, same from that scanner, UPS. All right, take a look. Wave five, we ran into the mob, we ran into that level of resistance, but what do we have? We have divergence. Warning sign from the market. And finally, CCK, all right? Wave five made that new high, we ran into the mob, we ran into that sticking point, and what happened? We see that change in trend. Warning sign in the form of that, that divergent oscillator. So that's what this is all about. The type two trade itself is actually very, very simple. There's not a lot of moving parts. Type one is the most complex trade we have. There's four things that have to happen before we can take that. But the type two, wave five, uh, oscillator divergence, and a mob. Okay, that's what we need. And again, money management has to be a part of what you're doing here. So again, as far as this end of trend change in trend, the termination of the trend, if you will, the type two trade, the wave five is recognized, the oscillator divergence indicates that that 68 to 74 percent of the time, those markets like to terminate on that secondary attempt. It's a very, very practical piece of the market. It requires a certain type of personality, but I am very much of the belief that even if you're not a contrarian by nature, you can still learn this just like any other skill out there. If you put your mind to it and really decide, hey, I'm going to learn this strategy, I'm going to learn how to be a counter trend trader, you're going to learn it. It may, come a, it may not come as easy for somebody who's a natural contrarian, but anything in here can be learned. And, and like Fausto was saying, you have to really make sure that you keep the learning process active. As traders, the worst thing that we can have happen is to stop learning, to stop assimilating new information. And uh, I was talking with a money manager friend of mine uh, earlier in the week, and, I, and he made the statement, you know, it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. But anything can be learned depending on your level of determination and really how it is, uh, or do you want to do this? Is this something that you really want to achieve for yourself? And if that's something that's true for you, there's nobody in the world that's going to stop you from doing it. So understand that, that uh, we're here to help you build that set of skills. We're here to help you develop that knowledge, and we've got a pretty powerful set of tools to do that. So what is inside of Advanced Get? Well, we've got a variety of things. Uh, so far, you've seen just a small portion of what's included with Advanced Get. We've got things like what we call the false bar stochastic, the ellipse, the mob, the Elliott waves. We also have the dashboard, which is a sort of favorite tool uh, for the um, uh, for the currency trader, currency traders and futures traders uh, really appreciate the dashboard, and of course the advanced get uh, scanner. So uh, we're incorporating a lot of different things. Today is just sort of a small uh, glimpse into what it is that we're bringing to the table.
If you are interested in learning some more about uh, e-signal learning and specifically advanced GET, uh, we combine these indicators with a significant education. Uh, if you, you were to go out and purchase these indicators um, as a one-time purchase, we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, the, the price is $32.95, $3,295 at one time. You buy it once, it's yours for life. All you're paying for after that is the reoccurring data fee. Uh, you can call the eSignal Sales Department at 1-800-815-8256. Visit us at eSignalLearning.com, and you can go and register for one of our uh, sales events. Uh, if you have a particular interest in the markets, whether it's stocks or options or futures, we cater to everybody, and we've got a pretty good set of tools combined with the education. Hopefully, you've got a, a sense of here today that will help you uh, get better as a trader, and that's what we're here uh, to do that. Uh, it is $32.95, $32.95, that's one time, but we also have some other pricing models available, Milton. If you don't want to do the one time $32.95, uh, we also have a monthly subscription option that you can talk to the sales uh, people about, and they will be happy to custom tailor uh, this for you. So uh, that is something that um, uh, I wanted to put out there, and uh, hopefully you guys will come and give us a visit. We'd love to have you and hopefully uh, delve into some more aspects of Advanced Get to really show you the value of what it is that we think we're bringing to the table. Uh, with that said, I want to just take a couple of quick um, questions going down here. I'm running short on time and I don't want to encroach on uh, anybody else's here. Um, it works on all time frames, it, you know, whether you're trading a, a one minute, daily, weekly. Everything I'm doing here today is all done from the PowerPoint presentation, but if you go to one of our uh, sales events, we will go into the real-time environment and uh, show you setups from the scanner. We will show you trades that we're taking, and uh, you'll be able to, to come and join us for, for those, and we will be happy to do that. Because of my short time here, I, again, I don't want to encroach on anybody else's uh, presentation here. So I'm going to turn things back over to Fausto and uh, the good folks at Cyber Trading University. Thank you so much for having me. I always enjoy these types of events. And uh, I appreciate you sharing part of your weekend uh, with me, and uh, we look forward to uh, chatting with you further. Everybody, have a, uh, a good weekend, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks again.